All right, what's happening? We are watching game number 10 unfold here before your very eyes. We've got, uh, there's the ELO checkup there, and we can look at the progress tokens, strategy and law, and then now we'll look at the wonders. I would suspect uh, Hanging Gardens gets taken, then Appian Way and Piraeus, and then Circus Maximus at the end. I predict the very first turns are to take uh, uh, the Conspirator and then take the Stone Reserve for the first two turns. But let's go right in. It is Tony 90... Or no, no, it is actually Frankenstein's turn. So we'll move right in. Piraeus gets taken by Frankenstein. And then we're looking at uh, it playing out uh, pretty much exactly how I said it would. That's how it's doing it. We're going in. Okay, Mausoleum gets taken by Frankenstein because, you know, you have to take the Sphinx as an extra turn. You want to have an extra turn advantage against your opponent. And then, got, uh, let's see. Frankenstein choosing a Conspiracy, placing it face down, and they put the other one on top of the deck. I see a lot of that. When you have one, you want to put it on top of the deck so you know what is coming up in the future. You have that knowledge, and knowledge is power. Um... So, Tony going to construct the clay pool for free. Tony choosing uh, the Greek divinity, placing it uh, higher up on the Pantheon, closer to Tony. And then, uh, Frankenstein discarding the uh, a building, the, uh, the politician left sector for two coins. Tony chooses the Greek divinity, placing it close to themselves again. I thought the Greek divinities are the ones you want to push downward close to your opponent. Um, but no, uh, Tony's going to put them close to themselves. All right, so maybe they think, hey, I'm, I need to win in points. That's how I win this game. I'm going to continue on doing points. That seems to be the, the case. Tony likes to pull off point wins. Okay, so Frankenstein uh, getting an apothecary, meaning Frankenstein is going to try to move in a science direction, maybe they want one of those progress tokens, but maybe they get a bunch of more science tokens, uh, science symbols, and then they are sitting pretty to win in our first science win in this grand 12 game situation here. All right. Um, the second one, yes. So the second one taken by Frankenstein, the first one taken uh, by Tony. Tony's taking one. Okay, that'll be very interesting. Um, Wonder what's going to end up happening. So, uh, Frankenstein taking a Mesopotamian god token, and that is going to be interesting because they're going to put it close to their opponent. That's probably Nisaba. I'd imagine that's Nisaba, and they're going to copy the opponent's uh, science symbol. Is this just going to be a race for science, like Pantheon expansion is? Pantheon alone becomes a, a, a race for science. So let's uh, let's look at this top left of the pyramid. Um, the Phoenician one was placed uh, closer to Tony, um, and wow, Frankenstein ends up taking uh, the press and has already taken the tavern. Ooh, they uh, they are using property fraud as a conspiracy that they prepared. Property fraud, that's, that's genius. And then they get to basically pull off a turn of events with Piraeus and then see what that final card is. Any guesses what it's going to be? It was clay, clay reserve, but they discarded it for coins. They didn't want it themselves. All right, so now we're looking in, and they start the next stage, which is a huge prediction for who's going to win this game. They take brewery, because why not have six coins plus the benefit of every future discard having one extra coin? They think that's better than taking Tanit. Um, but that reveal a science card, so forget about Tanit. We're taking the science card so that we can take strategy, which uh, most experts would say is better than law. Okay, so now Frankenstein is going to push in military, fearing that uh, Tony is going to start pushing in military. Didn't want to discard the military. Some, some fools will like to discard military if they see their opponent has strategy. Nah, just build military because strategy is so powerful you do need to spend those coins to, to fight the military good fight. And maybe you end up winning in military that way and you pre prevent every single military card from your opponent. But uh, with these two high-level players, I don't know if that's going to be the case. Beating somebody with strategy is difficult. 
All right, so uh, Tony getting an extra turn from Appian Way, and they're okay, they have two extra turns. Frankenstein only has uh, zero. They have zero extra turns, but their economy is looking pretty nice, only missing a stone, and they can get that stone from two cards left over in Age 2. One of them is revealed, the Caravan Sri. Frankenstein uh, returning the other divinity to the top of the deck, but... Uh, but taking Mars to push even further in military. And wow, we haven't even been paying attention to the Senate. Look at the Senate. It is covered with Tony's forces. Um, now, Tony is uh, sitting really good to be able to win politically here. They're very close, and all they, they, they just pushed one over, so all they need to do is control this final place, and then they can, they can win politically. And they have the extra turn to do it. And I think it's about to happen. So let's watch it how how it's gonna play out here. All they need to use is an extra turn. Oh, are they gonna have enough coins to pull it off? I don't think they will. They discarded it. Interesting discard. Okay. But um Oh, they didn't actually use an extra turn to do that. I lied. Sphinx is mm -hmm. still fine. All right. Now, the high cost will be ignored for all of those. Now. Frankenstein going to get an offering token. Those offering tokens are great. Minus three. But important... To note, Tony finally gets a military card. It's kind of a weak one, but anyways, uh, it, it lets him push it twice because of strategy. But man, you get so aggressive when your opponent has strategy. Frankenstein just, just really pushes in the military and makes it so like I become a liar and I say that military is not going to be the way it's won. Well, okay, hold on. What's happening here? Frankenstein realizing that they are one away from losing politically. They tie it up here. Um, now they have, uh, there are two more chambers that need to be controlled by Tony before a political victory is secured. Frankenstein really, really pushing in military, but now Tony able to end the game here with a political win, I would imagine. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to politics right here. So they place out one and then they are going to move one. So move this guy over, potentially. <laughs> they moved it one hook down, and then they have to move it one back. Oh, that's sad. They should have just left it where it was. All right. Um, and then now, uh, Frankenstein, with no extra turns, is still commanding the uh, where the military tokens are going, or where the military... Yeah, the, the military pawn is going. Um, making it so that Tony is going to either need to spend coins to get Aphrodite. Yeah, so they spent, uh, they actually got it for free with that offering token. What a beautiful offering token that is, though. All right, so now we're looking at this part of the board. Frankenstein takes their first blue card. They've just been ignoring the, the Senate this game. Tony taking the, uh, the final senator that they needed to take um, to win this game politically. And that's how we're going to end it, I believe. I think that's... That's the end of the game. Pol political victory for Tony. A boom, boom. All right, so we got a win, another win by Tony here. Very nicely done. And this time, a uh, political win. Right, so now move on to our game number 11.